Oh. Oh. Whoop. It's Alan Karpik with Tom Deanhart and Brian Newbert. Segment three, Golden Black Live. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors, Hilton Garden Inn. When tomorrow's a big day, state HDI tonight. Triple X, on the hill, but on the level of Purdue tra tradition since 1929. And of course, State Farm agent Trent Johnson. Also want to thank our first two segment guests. If you missed it, you'll, you'll be in for a treat. We had a lot, several of the 20... 2001 uh, Rose Bowl players, uh, segment one, segment two. If you missed that, get a chance to uh, go back and watch it on replay. But uh, Tom, we'll start with you. Uh, Purdue, Illinois, a an important game to say the least for Purdue, a game that the experts think the Boilermakers should win, maybe even relatively handily. Yet Illinois has to be considered dangerous just because they were able to beat Nebraska and yet they've lost their last three. What's the vibe from your perspective now as we look at this on Friday, just a little over 24 hours prior to the Boilermakers matchup with the Fighting Illini? Yeah, they were right in that game last Friday night at home against Maryland. They let the Terrapins off the hook. So, yeah, you know, Jeff Brom, that old team, you know they're not taking anybody lightly. Uh, the struggles of Illinois are well documented, obviously. Alan, you talked about the opening win against Nebraska, which was hailed. The Eli and I were fed it across the country. They've lost three in a row since then, including the home game to mighty Texas San Antonio. So, yeah. you know, we knew there was going to be some rough spots for Brett Bielema as he took over for Lovey Smith and Champagne. And sure enough, that's happened. There's still talent. There's still a lot of upperclassmen, seniors, super seniors on that roster. And uh, heck, they've won three of the last four as a program in West Lafayette. I know history really doesn't matter, but just sort of a fun fact. Um, so yeah, you know, the challengers are there for Purdue. I think, uh, we, we've written and talked about <clears throat> the importance of this game and the next game against Minnesota, <clears throat> both at home, you, you know, you got to take care of business against these peer institutions on your home field. If you're Purdue and you want to try to get to that magical, that mystical six win level. And again, um, this is a must win guys. I mean, you, you can dance around that phrase all you want, but this is a must win. Long story short, Purdue's got to beat this team. They're 11 point favorite. And uh, I think Purdue's, Purdue's got that, that, I guess, Rocky Balboa, Eye of the Tiger. I got that sense this week talking to Jamarcus Shepard, especially Jack Plummer, the quarterback guys. They were, they were disappointed with what happened last week in South Bend. I think maybe they felt they let one get, off, get away from them. Uh, maybe could have won that game had the offense played better, just 13 points. So I think they're, they're focused. They want to make amends offensively to what they did. And uh, I, I, I got a sense Purdue's going to come out focused and ready to go on Saturday. You know, but the part of that challenge, Brian, is no David Bell, or at least doesn't sound like it's going to be David Bell. I guess, Tom, I'll go back to you. No, no indication, no winking that, uh, that Bell's going to play. I mean, he says he's still in the protocol. Uh, what do you, you know, from that standpoint, but that no, nothing seems imminent there from your, your perspective. Yeah. yeah. Alan specifically, Jeff, Jeff on Thursday night said, of course, he's still in concussion protocol. And he also said it will be a game time decision. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I, I kind of get the sense we're probably not going to see David Bell Saturday. Um, that's just my hunch, my guess. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm wrong a lot, but uh, I guess I would be surprised if he lines up. Again, on Saturday, um, of course, Mershon Rice is out with a foot injury. Yeah. And he's going to be out for an extended period of time, maybe upwards of six weeks, it sounds like. So, again, who's going to step up at wide? Will Milton Wright, you know, take that step? Will, will Jackson Anto play a bigger role? How about T.J. Sheffield? What about Brock Thompson? So, again, there's plenty of talent there and plenty of opportunity for some of these other wide receivers to emerge. And I guess that's my question, Brian. I mean, you know, you, you, you try to fix that offense, and yet you've got your biggest weapon, two of your biggest weapons that aren't going to play tomorrow, in uh, obviously Xander Horvath and David Bell. That seems like a, you know, a little bit of a, a challenge to, for this offense against an Illinois defense that's been suspect at times, to say the least. Certainly at Virginia they were, but yet last week they – Gave up a lot of yards, but didn't give up a lot of points. So what do you think from that perspective, you know, in terms of the next next man up, as Tom mentioned, uh, it seems to me it produced uh, – to me it looks like a low-scoring game, I guess is what I'm saying. What do you think from that standpoint? 
Well, yeah, I mean, there's no game time decision to be made on David Bell until he's out of the protocol. You know, yeah. uh, concussions and concussion protocol matters don't work on a schedule. You can't put, you yeah. know, any sort of time frame on it. I got a concussion a couple of years ago. I still forget my name most days. <laughs> but um, so, but I'd be a little bit surprised at this point if David Bell plays. I, I'm basing that on nothing. For all I know, he could have woken up this morning you know, perfectly fine and he could be good to go. Uh, but I'd be, a, I guess I'd be a little bit surprised just because I think concussions are such a wild card that I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying I'd be a little bit surprised if we saw him. I, I don't know if I can really justify that with any sort of. Yeah. You know, more, we don't know. More meaningful comment, but obviously that is something that is a real obstacle for this offense. It's amplified by all the, all the other guys you don't have, Mershon Rice, this would have been a golden opportunity for him. Xander Horvath being out, I think, already has hamstrung this offense to a certain extent. Um, I don't think Illinois is good. You know, I think when they beat Nebraska, that was much more about classic modern Nebraska where they just can't get out of their own way. That When there's a play to be made, they do the opposite of good. Um, and I think when you look at the way they were competitive against Maryland, being competitive against Maryland on your home field is not – anything to write home about. And those were two teams that just couldn't do consecutive positive things. Uh, I think that um, obviously this is probably the most beatable team in the big 10, quite honestly. And, but the problem Purdue has right now is that this stuff's starting to pile up. Uh, you, you have a significant mm-hmm. obstacle here. If your best offensive player, the player you've built your whole offense around basically um, is out uh, depth is starting to become an issue. Uh, Illinois, I think, is going to try to put some pressure on the quarterback, and Purdue obviously didn't handle that so hot uh, at Notre Dame last week. So, uh, without your, without some of your weapons, Purdue is not nearly what Purdue would be otherwise here. So, the timing of this, when you have these winnable games, the last thing you want is for your winnable games mm-hmm. to go sideways on you because of circumstances. And right now, Purdue's got some circumstances here. I I still think Purdue has more than enough to win with, uh, but I think its ceiling as a team is considerably lower without David Bell to a lesser extent without Mershon Rice and certainly without Xander Horvath. Yeah, Tom, you know, this week too, the quarterback, Jeff Rahm, said after the game, he said it Monday, he said it Thursday, Jack Plummer's his guy, makes perfect sense, at least in my opinion. Uh, How do you see that being handled? And then you talk about it being kind of plumber's team, at least a little bit on your writing last night, but what, you know, how, how important that that's important. Obviously your quarterback is, but put that in perspective uh, for heading into this week. Yeah. You know, uh, again, Jeff reiterated after the game last Saturday and again on Monday and, uh, you know, Jack Plummer's his guy. And we talked a little bit last night about that as well. And of course, he knows Jack can get better at things. He says they watched some extra film together this week. He just wants Jack to be able to handle pressure a little bit more, uh, be a little bit more nimble in the pocket uh, when he feels pressure, not to flinch, not to panic, uh, just to buy time and keep your eyes downfield, those type of things. So there's plenty to work with as far as Jack Plummer, the quarterback, goes. We all know his skill set. We all have seen him win games. And I think he's capable here. And, and, uh, I think Purdue should be okay. I, I still think there's more than enough weapons on this offense, uh, at least passing game-wise, uh, to, to beat this Illini team. Now, the running game could be a different story. We'll see in missing Horvath. You know, that's that, that's always key, as Brian noted. Um, sounds like, guys, we could see Deion Burks, the true freshman wide receiver, get some carries. Jamarcus Shepard said this week that Burks has been working at a variety of positions. He came as a wide receiver. From Belleville, Michigan, he's a guy that they've looked at at running back a little bit. Uh, and, of course, Jaquez Cross, another true freshman who, who was signed as a running back, um, he's a guy we know they're getting ready. So a couple smaller true freshmen could maybe play some type of a role carrying the ball Saturday just to add some speed, some zip, some zig, some zag to a Purdue ground game that it's okay with King Daru and Dylan Downing, but Neither of those two guys is really going to be a threat to ever really break a long run. Well, guys like Cross and, of course, Burks give you a little bit more zip. The question is going to be, guys, are they really going to be ready? How much is the staff going to trust them? Yeah, it's going to be a good weather day tomorrow. The track should be uh, fast, even though there may be a little bit of rain tonight. 
in West Lafayette, but uh, they're supposed to be good and clear for tomorrow. All right, Brian, Brian, a quick note. You're making the trek down to see Brady Allen play tonight uh, down at Gibson Southern. Uh, you'll have more of that on the site next week. What do you, you know, you've seen him. What do you, what do you expect to see as we kind of put a wrap on the show, but to, just in terms of what are you looking for when you go watch him tonight? I don't know. <laughs> I've, 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 I've seen him play live before. I mean, I, I think he's a guy who has all the tools to be a pretty good quarterback. He's got good size. He's got a good arm. He seems like he's got a, a quarterback's mind. Uh, he's athletic enough. Um, you know, when you take out the game they played in Kentucky against one of the better teams in the state of Kentucky, uh, a game where I, I don't think Gibson Southern maybe um, – stacked up quite as well he's having damn near a perfect season against mm -hmm. indiana competition i think his completion percentage is starts with an eight or a nine mm -hmm. or something like that and he i don't think he's thrown an interception yet um i think he's just having a he's having an unbelievable year and you know i, I think he's pretty separated from the indianapolis media market here but i i'd have to think that this is a guy who should be in you know the thick of the mr football conversation here now mm -hmm. i think that that's probably going to some of the indianapolis guys and some of the larger classes are probably going to generate most of the attention in that regard but i mean i don't know what more what more this guy could be doing this season than what he's doing right now so i'd expect him i'd expect him to play really well they're playing heritage hills which is always pretty good um but gibson southern Gibson Southern's rolling right now. So I, I would imagine that, um, you know, he's going to play pretty well tonight. All right. Well, well, we'll look for that as well. All right, guys, we'll put a wrap on this uh, uh, segment and want to thank uh, Gordon Jackson and the folks at WLFI for putting this together as well. And of course, our sponsors, Triple X, Hilton Garden Inn, State Farm Agent Trent Johnson. We'll be back next week as we look forward to the homecoming and Purdue takes on Minnesota. Uh, for a, what will be another big game. We'll be talking about a lot of the same storylines and all likelihood the importance of that game for the Boilermakers. So, guys, thanks again. Have a great uh, rest of your Friday, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week on Golden Black Live.